meeting the challenges of the Anthropocene in the 21st century. I think that's the, the major theme that unites us um, around this idea of systems innovation. And this is the purpose of this conference here. Twofold. One, to get the picture, to get the bigger picture, what's on offer, what's out there in the world already. And second, come together and unite, not doing all your little thingies on your own. I mean, if I was Mr. Evil and wanted to uh, pursue my cause, I would look into civil society and all these wonderful NGOs and initi initiatives and other, and I would give all of them a little money and set up a competition saying, if you dance nicer, if you have smarter ideas, I give you a little more money. But not real money, not sufficient money to really grow, I just to keep you busy and keep you separated to make sure that I, Mr. Evil, can pursue my cause. And this is pretty much the situation we are in at the beginning of the 21st century. We are navigating on charter territory. We've been through the great acceleration where all the, our indicators giving us a picture of the world go through the roof. And we know that all the old stories which ha helped us to navigate the last 10,000 years, the legends, the myths, the kings and queens and all this, what is still served in things like Game of Thrones, uh, do not <laughs> sufficiently help us to navigate the 21st century. We live in a world where systems have grown into a size and into a character based on emergence that we know that the whole is different from the sum of its parts. And stories helping us to navigate the sum of parts are not the stories that help us to navigate power of context and emergence. And this is why we think that systems system sciences, cybernetics, complexity theory, chaos theory, are fields worth exploring. We hope that we get new maps from there to help us navigate the challenges of the Anthropocene in the 21st century. <laughs> Second focus I'd like to invite you to is pockets of the future. And there's a group around from the Center for Complex um, systems and transition from South Africa, Rika, Tanya, Dion, uh, you'll find them. Um, they, are, they are very much driving the idea to know that, uh, or to understand that we are not preparing for the one future that is coming, but that there are multiple futures, that there are scenarios, that future is a word that should actually be used in the plural. There are futures out there, which hands back the responsibility to choose and to prepare for the most desirable future back to the presence, back into our hands. <coughs> With that comes the responsibility we want to live up to. And we already see pockets of that desirable future in the present. And we have a lot of presentations, workshops, um, uh, keynotes that share these kind of pockets of the future we'd like to we'd like to meet we'd like to uh, get closer and get a feeling for them and have an idea and see that a better future a more desirable future is possible and already exists not largely but you mean that and the third focus uh, I'd like to invite you to is to explore or further your idea, our collective idea of systems change and to think change beyond a multi multitude of projects and to understand systemic change, to understand leverage points or mind shift, to understand that it is not only the achievement of a project that brings about change. It's not so much a matter of <coughs> getting things done as a matter of letting things grow. And this is where ecology 
as a science comes in that informs us much more about how to create the context and the circumstances for those futures we want to see grow, flourish, thrive, and not so much uh, operating in, a, in an engineering frame. We say, okay, well, it's f building futures is like building bridges, uh, buildings, infrastructure. Yes, there is always be that part of it as well, but that is not the part that is bringing us the future. At least not the, the desirable. And the other part of it is next two systems change all, understanding more about change, understanding more about governance, systemic governance. And to go back to Kahneman and think, thinking fast, thinking slow. We all know that in politics, it's all about emotions. It's all, all about this fast thinking part of it. Yes, but on the other hand, cognitive part, thinking slow, thinking things to their end, em embrace the complexity, m map the complexity, build, build systems that serve life on the planet is something that you do not with a rush of emotion, but something that is worth investing some, some degree of slow thinking. And, that is my last point for this part of the introduction, understanding the power of structures. Peter Senge in his uh, fifth discipline uh, came, came about with this idea of structure, behavior, results. If you want to have other results, if you want to see different things in the world, it, of course, has a built on a change of behavior. A change of behavior is nothing that you sort of hammer into people or lure people into by uh, playing to their emotion. The, the most sustainable way of getting that behavioral change is in changing the supporting structure, organization, structure, processes, and to have a look there as well. Not only, not only uh, being on the emotional side, um, although we know how important that is, but having the other part, the systems, the structures, the, the, the cognitive maps in, in our focus as well. So this is the invitation for this conference to explore exactly that. Exploring the unknown, looking for pockets of the future, and further our understanding of systems change.